Now we're going to sew the ear in place. So you're going to lay it, this is the part that curves forward, and we're going to lay it flat onto the side of the dog head. You want to line up the bottom of the ear with the bottom of the eye. And you're going to count over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About seven stitches, and you're going to sew along the base of the ear with your tapestry needle. You can also curve the ear so you want it to curve a little bit, just a slight curve and make sure that it ends right before the white portion of the head and sew it in place. And then make sure that when you sew the other ear that it you sew it in the exact symmetrical alignment on the head before sewing it in place. Then after I sew it in place you can see how the ear will flop forward on the dog. Now I'm ready to sew the other side ear the same exact way I sewed the This other is ear. how my dog looks so far. You can see how I have the ears in place and they're both sewn on in the exact same spot on opposite sides and they both flop forward floppy ears that flop forward now you're going to take the dog's head and we're going to turn it around we're going to join back the black yarn so we can close the head and stuff it so just take your crochet hook go in the stitch right after the loose yarn end you're going to take your yarn and hook it and bring it through. Then you're going to make a chain of one. Then you can go ahead and tie a knot. You can leave the loose yarn ends on the inside of the head. They won't show in there. Then you're going to need a yarn marker. Go ahead and get your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. We're going to start making decrease rounds. So you're going to make one single crochet into the first five stitches. So one single crochet into the first five stitches. Then you're going to make your decrease stitch. To make the decrease stitch, you're going to single crochet two stitches together. Or single crochet two together. So you take your crochet hook go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, you have two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, now you have three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops on the hook for a decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into five stitches and then a decrease stitch. I'm just going to show you how I work the stitches under the snout. So I'm actually working in the black portion of the head and not the white portion of the snout. So I just finished a decrease stitch so I'm going to make one single crochet into five stitches and you're just going to keep repeating the same pattern 
is my third, this is my fourth, and my fifth. So now I'm going to make a decrease stitch. And then I'm going to repeat the pattern again and just keep repeating that all the way around back to the When yarn you've marker. reached the yarn marker, go ahead and move it up. And for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into the next four stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you can go ahead and put your craft stuffing in and you can stuff more too as you're closing. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. For the next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. and then make your decrease stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. You can see how the hole is getting smaller and smaller. For this next round we're just going to make one round of one single crochet into every stitch. Sometimes as you're closing the decrease stitches make larger gaps in the crochet. So making one round of one single crochet in every stitch helps to make the holes or gaps smaller again. So go ahead, finish one single crochet in every stitch around and then come back. I went ahead and stuffed a little bit more craft stuffing in mine. Then I'm going to take and move the yarn marker up for a decrease round. For this next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then make your decrease stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around. Then take and move your yarn marker up you can see how it's getting smaller and smaller. Now you can go ahead and just make one single crochet into one stitch and then make your decrease stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around. This is how my work looks so far. You can see how I'm almost closed. The head is almost closed now. And this is where you can stuff more if you need to. Mine is stuffed pretty good. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to make decrease stitches all the way around until you can't make decrease stitches anymore. And then we're going to slip stitch it closed. So you're just going to keep making decrease stitches until it becomes too difficult. And I'm pretty close now to where I can just slip stitch it closed. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Just take your crochet hook. You're going to skip a stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way around skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And that pretty much closed mine up. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and you just pull enough yarn through to bury into the work.
Now I'm going to show you how to bury the loose yarn end. Just take your tapestry needle, put it onto that loose yarn end, and then you're going to go right in where you tied your knot, and then come out anywhere on the head, pull the loose yarn end through, and then just cut it. Now I'm going to show you how to put the hair. You're just going to get your black yarn, the effervesce black yarn, and put it onto your tapestry needle. Then you're going to take your dog, and starting from the corner of the ear, and then going straight down towards the nostril, about two rows down from the eye, you're going to be making a line of hair. So we'll start from up here at the ear and you're just going to put get a stitch with your tapestry needle and just bring the yarn through and you want the hair to fall just below the tip of the tongue the length of it to fall down we can trim it later, so don't worry about it being a little bit too long, but you don't want it too short either. So mine's about six inches, approximately six inches. Then you're going to take and loop it. So you're going to grab another stitch, come through, and form a loop. Make sure that all of your loops are going to be the same size as the initial strand that you had. And you're just going to keep looping in the imaginary line down to the snout. So just imagine the line going down from the snout and you're just going to keep looping the yarn. And then come back. This is how mine looks. And you can see how I followed that imaginary line. Then what you're going to do is start right at the beginning. And then you're going to take your loop. You're going to cut it right down the center of the loop. And then just tie a knot. Make sure you don't pull it too tight because you'll pull the other loops. You don't want to pull the other loops. This is the loose yarn end. I'm going to tie a knot to the loose yarn end as well. And then you're just going to take every individual loop and just tie a knot. And you're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And then come back. This is how mine looks so far. Don't worry if the hair is too long right now. We're going to be styling the hair after we finished putting it all in place. So you can see how I have both sides with the long black yarn for the hair. Now we're going to make the white yarn under the snout. Just the take your way. white yarn, the effervesce white yarn, and place it onto your tapestry needle. And right where you left off with the black yarn, at the base of the snout only, you're going to grab a stitch and you're going to leave a long hair So here you can see it's about seven inches. You want it to be long so you can trim it. Then you're just going to loop it. So you're just going to take and loop all along the bottom of the snout. So that bottom stitch only up to the other side and meet 
the other side. You're just going to keep looping. Oop, tangle my scissors. You're just going to keep looping the white yarn the same length as your initial yarn. And like I said, don't worry if it's too long. We're going to be grooming and being a dog, crochet dog hairstylist and styling the hair how we want after we're done. So go ahead, finish looping, and then you know how to cut the ends of the loop also to tie your knot. So here I'm just going to make the length equal and then I'm just going to show you. So as soon as you're done, you can wait until you go all the way across or you can do it as you finish each session. But you're just going to take the center of the loop just like you did before. And you're just going to tie a knot. Being careful not to pull the other loops. And then I'm just going to tie the initial loose yarn end as well. And then you're going to do that all the way across to the other side and then come back. You can see how I'm going in and out and creating loops, the white loops of yarn, all along the bottom of the snout with my tapestry This needle. is what it looks like after I'm done, making all of the loops all the way to the other side. Make sure that they're even when you're done, and then you can cut each loop and tie a knot. This is how the dog looks so far. You can see how I've already tied the knots on the hair under the snout. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the side where we put the darker hair. You're going to lift it up, and we're going to put one more row of the longer hairs underneath. So just take your tapestry needle and your darker yarn and you're just going to go right underneath and you're just going to make a long loop. This is about how long I'm leaving mine and I'm just going to loop the yarn all the way diagonally the same length that I made the upper row of yarn. And each loop that you make should, should be the same length each time. And then we can trim it later, so don't worry if you've made it too long because we can always trim it. You just don't want to make it too short because then you don't, don't have that much to work with. So to kind of make it long, but not too long where you're wasting the yarn. If you want to measure it about the same as mine, mine measures about 7 inches in length. And now I'm just going to tie the knots, and then you're just going to repeat the same thing on the opposite this side. This is what mine looks like so far. You can see the longer lengths of hair, and we'll trim it later. Don't worry about that right now. If you like this yarn, Beginners can also use this yarn if they're just using it for the hair decoration. If they don't feel comfortable or they think it costs too much, you, I'm going to show you how you can use regular yarn instead if you like that look. But if you do like this look, you may want to make the ears with the regular yarn if you don't feel comfortable crocheting with it. But if you're just using it for fur, you don't need to be a more advanced crocheter to use this type of yarn because you're just going to use your tapestry needle. I'm going to show you how I crocheted with this yarn so you can see if you think that it's too difficult or not. You're going to crochet it the same way that you did with your regular yarn. The first thing you're going to do is just fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then just pull on that loose yarn end to create your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 11, just like you did before for the regular yarn. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty
to So you can see how even a beginner could use this yarn. It's not too difficult to see the stitches and you're going to amaze people who've never used this yarn before that you've never crocheted before and were able to make this. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop Then you have two loops on your hook. You're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over to make a single crochet. So, so far I have four stitches that I've made. If you're a beginner, I would recommend that you count your stitches you should have 10 stitches by the time you're done with this row. I know we started with 11, but if you remember, we made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So for the second row, you're only going to have 10. and I'm just going to crochet it with you so you can see how I'm doing it and you can see the stitches so it's not it looks like it's a scary yarn to use because of all the little hair pieces that are going everywhere but you can still see the stitches without any problem so I just finished my last stitch and that's how it looks so far now I'm going to move up to the next row. So what you're going to do is you're going to chain one. Then you're going to turn your work. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So that chain one will count as one stitch. So this is our second stitch. Go into the next stitch over for the third, then the fourth, and your fifth, sixth, Seven, eight, nine, and then the last stitch, ten. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and we're going to do that two more for two more rows. And I'm going to do it with you so you can see how I'm doing it. So that first chain one counts as one stitch. Go into the next stitch over for two. Next stitch over for three next stitch over it's four five six seven eight nine and the last stitch 
for 10. So counting will help you make sure that you have the right number of stitches as you're working. So we're going to make one more row of 10 stitches. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and repeat. So this time I won't count out loud, but you should have 10 stitches. And like I said, as a beginner, if this yarn is too much for you, you can just use your regular yarn and make the ear with the regular yarn first to get used to it. Then you can come back to this yarn if you get more experienced to try and make the ear or crochet with this style of yarn. Because I think this would probably make a nice scarf too. If you wanted to make a pretty scarf, fancy scarf, you can see that it's not really that difficult to work with. So now I just finished the three rows of one single crochet in every stitch. Now we're going to start making the triangular portion of the ear. So we're going to move to the next row. For the next row, you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over. For one. Next stitch for two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you can see that we don't have 10, we have 9 because we didn't do make our chain 1. Then you're just going to turn your work, no chain 1, and you're going to see how it's going to get less and less stitches with each row. So now you're going to go into the next stitch over for 1, 2 single crochet, 3, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then you're going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over for one single crochet, two, Three, four, five, six, and seven. Then turn your work, go into the next stitch over. You can see how we're getting smaller and smaller, forming the tip of the triangle. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So then the next one, when you turn, should be five stitches.
then you're going to have four stitches and you should see a triangle starting to form for the ear Now it's going to be three. Then you're going to turn your work. Now it's going to be two. Then turn your work and you're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch over for the tip of the triangle and then finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through. I usually pull enough to sew the ear onto the dog. So you can see how it wouldn't be hard for a beginner to use this yarn and it's just fun because it looks like hair or fur. Then you're going to want to take your tapestry needle and put it onto the long end that you left for sewing and you're just going to weave it in and out through the ear until you get down to the bottom. Corner. So you can sew it onto the dog. Then you just take the ear and lie it flat onto the dog's head, position it, and I lined up the top portion of the ear with the top part of the white stripe on the head, and then the bottom part with the eyeball. And it's about one, two, three, four, five, six stitches away from the eyeball. And then you just go in and out, sewing it. In place. Also, if you're going to be using this fake fur type of yarn, you may want to get one of your a DMC yarn threader. It looks like this. It just will make it a little bit easier. You just put the hook, one of the hooks, right through the tapestry needle eye. Then you take the yarn, hook it, and then just bring it right through. It's just quick and easier. I just wanted to show you the differences between the two dogs. Here is the fake fur yarn for the ears. And then if you don't feel comfortable as a beginner making the ears this way with crochet, you can just make the same pattern with the regular yarn and it works just as well. And this is what it looks like, the two different looks of the dogs. Now I'm going to show you the different look if you use the fake fur on the face of the dog. If you decide that you're just going to use the fake fur yarn for just the fake fur decoration on your dog, then you just put it onto your tapestry needle. It might help to have your DMC yarn threader. That way you can just hook the yarn and just bring it through the eye of the needle. Then you're just going to take in the same way that you would with the regular yarn, you're going to take and just at the corner of the ear, you're just going to take in about a stitch with your tapestry needle and you're going to bring the yarn through. Make sure that you leave. We're going to put two layers, so you can make it about four inches if you wanted to, four to six inches, and then just loop it across. You're going to loop it diagonally, about equal to where the nose is and to the tip of the ear. For the body, you're going to make it the same way that you made the head, except for the head you had 14 rows of one single crochet in every stitch. 
With the body, you're going to complete 18 rows of one single crochet in every stitch. And then go ahead and put your craft stuffing inside and then come back. After you finish using making 18 rows of one single crochet in every stitch, now you're going to close it and you're going to close it the same way that you closed for the head. Just put your yarn marker right where you left off. You have some craft stuffing inside and you're going to add craft stuffing as we go. For the first decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. There's one. Then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then For the come next back. decrease round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into four stitches. Then you're going to make your decrease stitch. Just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over just like you've been doing. Then go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Now I have three loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. For the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. And then make your decrease stitch. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come Then back. for your next decrease round, it's one single crochet into two stitches, and then your decrease stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around. And remember to place your stuffing as you close and make it as fluffy as you want for the body of the dog. And yes, for the next one, you're going to make one single crochet in one stitch and then your decrease stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around. Now you can see how I'm almost closed. This is how mine looks so far. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove the yarn marker. You don't need it anymore. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to make decreased stitches all the way around. Until you can't make any more decreased stitches. And then we're going to slip stitch it closed. So I'm at the point where I can slip stitch it closed. What you're going to do is you're going to skip a stitch and then go into the next stitch. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to repeat that until the body is completely closed. And I'm just going to make one more and then mine is completely closed. Then I'm just going to yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to bury the loose yarn end into your work. Now you're just going to take your tapestry needle. Then you just take your tapestry needle and place it right on the loose yarn end that you just cut. And then just go right in where you tied your knot and then come out anywhere on the body. And then you just kind of pull your loose yarn end and then cut it. And that just buries it in the work. And now your body is ready to be sewn to the head. Now you're just going to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn as the body. Then you're going to take the head of the dog and just turn over the head of the dog so that you have the center of the head's magic circle at the bottom. Then take the body where you just buried the loose yarn end 
and then put that one and line it up with the magic circle of the head. Then you can take your tapestry needle and you're just going to take and sew the body to the head just going in and out all the way around. Make sure that you leave enough loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work. And I leave about four inches of loose yarn end. Then you can go back in right where you close to where you came out. Here's where I came out. So I'm going to go about a stitch over back into the head and out close to where my loose yarn end is. As close as you can because you're going to be tying a knot. I'm just going to grab, go a little bit closer. Then you can go ahead and tie a knot. Then you can take, make sure that your body is lined up on the head. Then you're just going to keep going all the way around with your tapestry needle and just sewing the head to the body. So you just keep going all the way around. Go back in about a stitch over from where you came out. Go into the head and out the body and just do that all the way around. You may need to go around a couple of times until you've made sure that the head is sewed on securely to the body. Once you're happy with how the body is sewn onto the head, making sure that it's secure and won't come undone, take your tapestry needle and you're just going to go out close to where you started. Then you can just tie a knot And you're going to bury the loose yarn end the same way that you did before. You just go right in with your tapestry needle right where you tied your knot. Come out anywhere on the body. Just pull the tapestry needle through, burying the loose yarn end, and then just cut it. So go ahead, bury both of your loose yarn ends. And then I'm going to show you how to make the feet. For the feet, I just wanted to show you the difference in the yarns and the crochet hook. So with my H or 5 millimeter crochet hook, which is the hook that we've been using, it makes this size paw with the effervesce yarn. So you can see the look of the paws if you use this crochet hook. And then if you have the Red Heart equivalent yarn, this is what the paw looks like with when using this crochet hook. For one of the dogs I used a smaller crochet hook. This crochet hook is the F or 4 millimeter crochet hook and you can see the look. This is with the effervesce yarn and this is the difference, the size difference and look between the two feet. So you can decide which crochet hook that you want to use. If you would like the bigger foot, then you would use the H or 5 millimeter. And if you like the look of the smaller foot, then you can use your F or 4 millimeter. And I use the same pattern for both. So you just need to switch your crochet hook if you would prefer the smaller foot. To make the paw or the foot of the dog, we're going to start with the white yarn that you're using to make the paw. And we're going to start with the magic circle. So you just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and thumb. 
just like we've done before. For mine, I'm making the smaller foot, so I'm using my F or 4 millimeter crochet hook for this dog, but you could, if you want the larger paw, you would just use your H or 5 millimeter crochet hook and it's made the exact same way. So the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to grab the yarn and bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one. If it doesn't close, just let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing, so I'm just going to gently close it. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12. I'm just going to do the first one with you. So two single cro crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 and then come back. This is how your work should look after you're done. You can go ahead and close the center of your magic circle if you need to by turning your work over and pulling on that loose yarn end. Then you're going to take your yarn marker and place it right where you left off and we're going to start our increase rounds. So you're going to be, I'm going to show you the rounds, but we're going to be increasing to one in five and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. So the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. For the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. So you can see how we're increasing the same way that we did for the head and the body. Go ahead and keep increasing. The next round would be one single crochet into three and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and repeating that pattern around and then one in four and then one in five. So the last increase round will be one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch and then come back. This is how my work looks after finishing one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. So I've finished my last increase round. Then you're going to take your yarn marker and move it up. And for the next round, you're just going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So only one round of one single crochet in every stitch and then come back. After you make one round of one single crochet into every stitch, then you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and we're going to make 12 decrease stitches. It's also known as single crochet two stitches together. So we're going to do that 12 times. So you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for your decrease stitch or a single crochet, two stitches together. So that's one. We're going to do this 12 times. This one's six. Two, 
two more for a total of 12. Then you can go ahead and shape the front of the paw. You can see how it's forming the front of the paw when you did that. Now go ahead, finish one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker and then come back. Now you can go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. For the next round you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So one round of just one single crochet in every stitch around and then come back. Then you can take and move your yarn marker up. This is how my work looks so far. For this round, you're going to start with eight decrease stitches or eight single crochet, two stitches together. So here's one. Two. So go ahead, finish eight single crochet two together or eight decrease stitches. Then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. So eight decrease stitches and then one single crochet in the rest of the stitches back to the yarn marker and then now come I'm back, back to my yarn marker. This is how my work is looking so far. You can see how you have the little front part of the paw in the area that you're making your decrease stitches. Now you're going to move the yarn marker up and you're going to make one round of just one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then when you reach the yarn marker go ahead and move your yarn marker up. This is going to be our last decrease round meaning this is the last round we're going to, where we're going to decrease the number of stitches around. We're going to make five decrease stitches. I'm just going to work this decrease round with you. So there's one two, three, four, and five. Now you can make one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker So just one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. Then you can see how large my opening is for the paw and how we formed the front paw. This is how mine looks so far. Now you can take and move your yarn marker up and you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have completed 17 rounds. So I'm just going to make the first couple with you. So one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed 17 rounds. So when you get back to the yarn marker, you're just going to keep going. So I'm back to the yarn marker. 
and I'm just going to keep going. So that was our first round. So you can see how it's the first round, but you're going to keep going until you've completed 17 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And then come back. This is how your work should look after you finish the 16 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. Then you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. But first I'm going to make just one more round. Make it. You can make it as long of a leg as you want. I decided that I'm just going to make it 17 rounds. And you can put it up to the body too to see if it's the length that you want for your front paw. So mine is going to end with 17 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. And then once you're finished, just count your rounds from your yarn marker. Then you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over. Then just yarn over and turn your hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the front paw onto the body of the dog. Then you can go ahead and stuff the leg with stuff, craft stuffing and then you need two of them before you sew them onto the front of the dog. Now I want to show you how to make the hind leg. You're going to make it the same way that you made the front legs except you're going to stop after you get to the fifth round of one single crochet into every stitch. But the rest is made exactly the same as the front after leg. After you finish your four, five rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, we're going to start our increase rounds. We're going to do three increase rounds. So go ahead and move your yarn marker up. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. I'm almost back to the yarn marker. I have one stitch left. You can just make one single crochet into that stitch. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up. For this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Go ahead and make a single crochet into any remaining stitches and then move your yarn marker up. Then you're going to make your last increase round. You're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around. After you finish your increase round, I'm going to show you how to change colors. You can continue on and make one of the hind legs all the same color or you can change colors for both, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to show you now how to change colors. So take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to grab your black yarn and hook it and bring it through both loops. Then you're going to chain one. Turn your work. Cut the previous color. Leave enough for tying a knot. Go ahead and tie a knot and then come back. Now you're just going to go into the next stitch over. Bring up a loop two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around 
until you've completed six rounds and then come back. So six rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Now just make six rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six, of just one single crochet in every stitch around. Now we're going to start our decrease rounds. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And for the first decrease round, you're just going to make one single crochet into three stitches. Then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the You yarn could go marker. ahead and put the craft stuffing into the hind leg and stuff it more as you close. Then you're going to go ahead and move your yarn marker up for the next decrease round. And you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then make your decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. For the next decrease round, just make one single crochet into one stitch and then make your decrease stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. This is how your work should look so far. You can see how it's starting to close. You can go ahead and remove your yarn marker. Now you're just going to make decrease stitches all the way around until you're almost closed. And then come back and I'll show you how to slip stitch it closed. So just make decrease stitches all the way around until you're almost closed and then I'll show you how to slip stitch it completely closed. This is how my work looks so far. I'm almost closed and you can stuff more into the leg if you want. Now we're ready to slip stitch it closed. So you're just going to take and skip the next stitch, go into the next stitch and yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to do that all the way around until the hind leg is closed. And for mine, one more should do it. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So you can see how I have one hind leg with the white and the black. And then I made one where I had all white. So you can have fun with the colors and uh, mix match and change up the colors however you want for your dog. Now, after you finish closing, just take your yarn marker, I mean your, not your yarn marker, your tapestry needle, put it onto that loose yarn end, and then go right in where you tied the knot and come out anywhere with your tapestry needle and just bring the loose yarn end through. That helps to bury it makes a nice smooth top and then you bury your loose yarn end 